in facilities that are going to be permanent, where you're going to build the facility and never move it. I recommend just building from scratch. You can end up getting a stouter, better facility for, you know, probably the same amount of money. It's not going to rattle and clank. I'm not a big fan of using portable equipment for permanent. Now, are, there are places where you need to have portable equipment, where you need to move it around from pasture to pasture. If you're on leased or rented land, obviously you don't want to donate facilities to the uh, landlord or to the government that owns the lease. So that's a situation where you would use portable equipment. But too often times people just buy portable equipment and set it up for permanent. And then they have something they're not all that satisfied with. Because since it's put together with pins, it is going to you know, rattle and, and clank. When you're laying out curved facilities, you must lay them out correctly. One of the things that you want is a crowd pen that makes a complete half circle. That's 180 degrees. Because cattle have a natural tendency to go back to where they came from. And I want to take advantage of that natural tendency. Too often times, people build a tub or a round crowd pen that just kind of goes through like this. Well, those don't work very well. I want the full half circle. As I come around here, I can walk around on this, um, on this catwalk, and this catwalk's at the correct height. I'm 42 inches from where I'm standing to the top of the fence, which puts that in compliance safety regulations. You don't want to make catwalks too high. Being over the top of cattle is really bad. But on the other hand, I don't want it so low that I'm like this trying to reach over it. You know, you could make this a little lower, or maybe I'd reach like here but I have got to be able to easily reach over this catwalk. So we come on around the round crowd pen, and as the cattle come on around here, as they enter that single file chute, and this is laid out correctly, they can see up there two body lengths because you've got to show them a place to go. I mean, curve chutes work because cattle have a natural tendency to go back to where they come from, Another advantage of a curved single file chute is as the cattle come around the round crowd pen and they want to go back to where they came from, as they enter that single file, they're not able to see all the people standing around the squeeze chute. Another good design as you come off the uh, tub into the single file chute is to put in a 10 foot straight section because I want to make sure that they see a place to go. And the most critical part of the design is right where your single file joins your tub. That's really critical. If you lay out this junction wrong, where your single file joins your tub, it's not going to work. Right here, I have another little door, and there's no latch on it. If I'm in here and something nasty's chasing me, I can just pull this open and I can get right out. See, it just works with a spring. This opens inward, a little door. It's really important to put man gates into facilities. The animal that is most likely to really injure somebody is the lone animal. Cattle panic and go berserk when they're alone. Uh, you can get into a very dangerous situation where all the cattle go up the single file and you got one left going berserk. Do not get into a small confined area with one animal going berserk. That's the animal that puts people in the hospital. It's better to just let it out and bring some other cattle uh, up with it. So as we come on in here, We've got a backstop gate. In a lot of facilities, your cattle are going to come in a lot more easily if you tie this open. People have a tendency to put in too many backstops. If cattle are constantly backing up, I want to figure out why they're backing up, rather than putting more stuff in there to stop backing up. A lot of places take this backstop that's right here close to the entrance and hook it up with a remote control room. So standing back there somewhere, I can open this up, hold it open for the cattle. But it's very important that this not jiggle. If this jiggles like this, they're not going to go in. They're very sensitive to little bits of rapid movement. Also, this backstop's located about eight feet in from the entrance. You know, don't put your backstop right at the single file chute entrance. Put it in there a ways. This facility's designed so that we have a completely solid side on the crowd pen, but then this is only solid part way up so that a handler working on the ground can work the flight zone. Again, the principle with solid sides is, is where it's especially important to have solid sides is the outer perimeters of things. So this doesn't have to be completely solid here, but then if I got cattle in here, I don't stand on top of this where I'm in the flight zone. I'm gonna need to stay back here and stay out of the flight zone, and then when it's time to move them, go up there and move them. 
This facility is set up to where most of it's outside and then you just have a small building over the squeeze chute. And this solves the problem of cattle not wanting to enter a dark building because in this building the cattle can see right through the building and that's going to help to get them in there. If you do decide to build a big building over the whole entire thing, I want to get lots of white translucent skylights up in the top of the building and I want white translucent skylights because I want it to look like a cloudy bright day with no shadows. Animals have a natural tendency to go from a dark place to a brighter place, but they will not go into blinding light. If your loading ramp or your squeeze chute is headed right straight into the sun, it's not going to work. You're handling cattle when it's dark. You can use artificial lighting to attract them into the building, and it needs to be indirect lighting, very similar to what we have right here in this building. So that as the cattle approach the building, they see a lighted entrance, but they don't see bare light bulbs just glaring them right in the face. Now during the daytime, when it's really sunny, that lighting's not going to attract them into a building. Then I'm going to have to do things like the white translucent skylights, or I'm going to have to take tin off so that the cattle can see through the building. But at night, I can completely uh, light it up properly with, with uh, artificial lighting. One sorting device you should definitely have in every facility is a gate in front of your squeeze chute. As you come out of the squeeze chute, this facility has got sort gates so I can sort cattle off into different groups. For example, I can just open up this gate right here and gate goes across the alley and I can sort cattle into this pen. Having sort gates in front of the facility is a really, really good feature to have because sometimes an animal gets stuck halfway out of the squeeze chute. And if you've got sorting gates in front of your squeeze chute, then you can just sort that animal off. You're not going to be tempted to try to do your injections and your ear tags while he's half out because it's such a big pain in the butt to get him out from 200 other cattle. So another thing I really recommend is to have at least one sort gate in front of a squeeze chute so that I can have one pen where I put all the cattle in, but then if I have some miscots, I've got a place where I can put them out in another pen where it'll be easy to recycle back around through the facility. Well, if you're building a, a, a ramp just to unload, it can just be, you know, 10 foot wide, let them out. But for a loading ramp, you need to have them going up single file so that they'll go into the 30 inch door that's on the trailer. So your loading ramp should have straight sides 30 inches apart, and that's a measurement inside against the animal. I also recommend solid sides on loading ramps because there's a lot of commotion and disturbances around that ramp, especially in places like large feed yards and sale barns. Now for unloading, I want to have a level dock, minimum of 10 feet long, so when they come out of that truck, they're going onto a level surface. In real high volume situations, such as sale barns and auctions, that level section should be 20 feet long because sometimes cattle jump and I don't want them jumping off the truck and jumping into the, uh, into the ramp part. So they come off a level and then they go down. And on concrete ramps, you should use stair steps. And the advantage of stair steps is, is when they wear out, the cattle can still walk on. You want a three and a half inch rise and a 12 inch to 18 inch run. Little steps like this because if you just groove a concrete ramp, they get all worn out and slick. Now, if you have a wood ramp or steel ramp, then you wanna make your cleats uh, eight inches apart, so the feet will fit down in between the cleats, and you can go a two inch by two inch uh, you know, hardwood uh, cleat, that will work. You can go a square metal, that will also work, but you want those cleats eight inches apart, so the hooves just fit down in between the cleats. People need to be very aware of all the little distractions that make cattle balk and make cattle refuse to move. These distractions can wreck the best facilities. If there's a chain hanging down, a coat on a fence. Well, you certainly don't want a dog uh, you know, poking his nose in through the fence. There's a reflection off the bumper of a truck. Get down into your chutes and see what the cattle are seeing. The animals will show you where there's distractions they don't like. They'll come right up and they'll point their eyes and ears right at the chain or whatever it is that they're seeing. Get rid of it. Another thing is they're not going to approach people up ahead. So sometimes just taking a piece of plywood or something else and put it up as a shield. So as the animals are approaching, they don't see the people up ahead. Sometimes that will work really well. I want to get you more aware of 
what are those animals seeing? But we can be aware of things like shadows, chains hanging down, and I'm amazed at how I can fix a facility by removing distractions. I have fixed many facilities with simple things. Get the water bottle off the ground, get the coats on, off the fence, move the pickup where there's a big bright reflection coming off the bumper. Doing those things makes a big difference. I can't emphasize enough the importance of getting distractions out of facilities.